Welcome back everybody. Uh, part 10 here in the how to build a single ended tube amplifier. Well, first I'd like to apologize for my delay in getting this done. I've been looking for like two whole solid days to just kind of dive in and get this thing done. And my work and personal life schedule have just not been accommodating. So all I've been finding is two hours here, three hours there. So I've been fitting in other little projects I could do in those time frames. It looks like I'm just going to have to tackle this thing the same approach, though, uh, in small little chunks. So my goal is to get this done by Halloween, uh, taking the smaller chunk approach. Here we go. Um, so I've kind of got the chassis laid out here, as you can see. And I've got my tubes laid out that I'm going to be uh, mounting. I've got the, uh, I've laid the uh, chokes over here on the side already and marked the uh, side pieces. I'll show you that in a minute. But right now what I've got is I've got a, uh, a, a metric ruler laid out here. And um, I've kind of got it set with 30 centimeters here with 15 centimeters here in the dead center. And what I've been doing, I've used another ruler to kind of make sure that this thing um, on each side was squared off evenly. Um, so kind of squared. And what I'm doing now is um, I'm kind of measuring away from this center one. Um, this one, and I'm using the little center pieces here in the middle of the tube sockets as my guide. Right there I've got that one at um, 22 centimeters. And so um, what I can do then is hold that down and I use a little chassis punch right here. And you just push it down in the very center. And what it does is it leaves two little divots there. They're fairly fine. You can adjust the back of this thing and make really deep divots, but I'm not going for that. I've got what I need out of that right there. And then I can uh, make sure I line this one up well and uh, you know, spot on the exact same 15 millimeter here. Let's see right there. And I've got this squared up. And so I can now come along and do the exact same thing here in the very center of these. One there, and one there, and again, two little divots. And I'll draw a straight line across these before I drill those out. It's kind of hard to see the, the little divots, but uh, maybe if I get it close enough, you can, you can see them right there. They're really small, just barely through the, through the plastic here into the uh, tape. And you can pick one of these little things up for just three or four dollars and uh, to get the idea I'm going to get the others going here across the front of this. Okay and then to give myself just a little more visual to it I just come along with a uh, you know a little uh, sharpie here and uh, circle those things just a little bit but uh, and like I said I'll, uh, I'll draw a true line across here like this before I actually go drilling these things. I've also flipped up on the ends here you can see I've done the same thing with uh, both ends where, where the um, chokes would go. I want to make sure once I got the chokes laid out that I wouldn't have any issues with the uh, with the tube sockets here. So you just kind of keep working your way like this. Okay, as you can see, I've kind of got a bunch of tubes laid out here on it. That one keeps kind of falling over. But I'm trying to get a general idea. I'm trying to mount the transformers right now and uh, mark them off. I've already done this one. Um, but I'm trying to get a feel here for, you know, how far from these tubes to these tubes to the transformers. And you got to leave room in the back here for mounting uh, speaker jacks and or RCA inputs. So you got to leave yourself a little bit of room here as you're working on the back side of this thing. But same thing, using a ruler, squaring things up, um, marking uh, the chassis, then coming along and coloring it a little bit but you get the general idea if you notice I got these transformers going this way this one the good thing about these square transformers the drop down in type you know you get the horizontal plane going on and don't have to worry as much about uh, interference and uh, these beautiful 807s are going to mount right here in front of these transformers okay up next I uh, printed out the uh, chassis cutout uh, diagram here for the transformer that we're going to be using and I kind of laid it all out here and I highly recommend if you don't have one digital micrometer lets you get exactly to the right uh, um, measurement that you're wanting and so basically I laid out this little square that shows not only the cutout but the uh, screw hole sizes 
I've laid it out here. I've got the four hole screw sizes and then I've got this inner square here which is the uh, the cutout that I need to make and fortunately at this point I've also got, you can't see them because I haven't marked them, but I've also got the other four transformer holes right here. The only other piece we've got to kind of figure out at this point in time is really the uh, the cutouts for the wires. Now in this one I won't need that because I'm cutting out this whole center section right here. But on these transformers I've got to make cutouts holes here um, in the bottom. And if you notice these holes are going to be about dead center in between these uh, these uh, tabs on this thing. So you can about guarantee, maybe in just a little bit I'll measure them, but uh, I'm going to need some holes here as well that I'll put grommets in to feed the wires down through the bottom of the transformers as they uh, as they go through the chassis here. So we've got to mark all these things. you got to mark where you want your little uh, cable lay down. you got to mark where you want your transform I mean your capacitors to mount. All of this in this stage because what we're going to do next is we're going to go drill this whole thing and then once we get it all drilled and the holes kind of cleaned up that's when I'll actually uh, paint, paint this chassis and uh, let it dry. So my goal is to get all this drilled today so we can get the chassis painted and let that dry so that next weekend we can come back around and do a little more. Okay, as you can see here, we've pretty much got this thing laid out now. Um, all the tubes, you know, we got all the output transformer markings here. I've got the center holes measured off. They're a little bit offset from the center. Um, we've got the power transformer, the holes here for the uh, studs on this thing uh, that go right here, as well as the center cutout that we've got to cut here in the middle. We've got the uh, you know, the two pin, two things here, two here and two here for the uh, you know the hold downs on the uh, tube sockets, and we've got a horizontal line drawn that's square with the chassis, so we know exactly where to mark each one or cut each one of these, drill each one. Same thing here with 6S and 7, 6S and 7, 6S and 7. All equally spaced, measured. Uh, don't skimp out on this phase. Um, and let me show you something. If you make a mistake, good example, uh, and you will, don't get me. <laughs> right here. I marked a line. Whoops. Get the camera to focus in. I marked a line right here, but it should be over a little bit. And all I did was drew a little arrow pointing that way. This said, hey, use the one furthest that way. I did the same thing um, right here. I had two markings. I said, hey, go with the one um, furthest that way. So, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can account for your mistakes. Good thing about this white plastic that's stuck all over this thing right now. Once you get it drilled, you pull all of it off and uh, all this writing goes away. And then we can get around to painting the chassis. Um, what we're going to move to next here is uh, the... Uh, the jacks on the back of this thing uh, for both the RCA input output as well as uh, uh, the IEC connector. First thing we did here was get a center line drawn all the way across the back. That way we're going to mount all these things right on that line and uh, we know they'll be squared up. Okay, this is the part where you really have to put a lot of thought into what you're doing here. Um, for example, this IEC connector here Thank goodness I moved this transformer forward enough that I can actually mount this thing here in the very center on the back and still have enough room there, coverage or clearance. But the problem I've got here is this uh, fuse holder. Um, I don't have enough clearance. So I'm going to have to come off to one side right here between this power transformer and this output transformer. And as you can see, I'm going to mount the, uh, the fuse connector right here on this side. And then I like to take the output jacks and I like to mount them parallel here with the output transformer. So the output transformer is going to be mounted about right there. And I literally like to come right here um, off the back of an amplifier right away from this. And the reason why is because these wires right here are what you would be feeding uh, to this red positive. So you end up with wires this long coming from your output transformer um, to your to your output RCA, I mean uh, banana jacks here. So um, then I've got, oh, what am I going to do with my uh, 
you know, my input jacks. That's uh, I got to figure that out. So you got these uh, nice little input jacks right here. Um, so what I've decided is I'm going to mount them on top of each other. So one on below and one above. And just like where I had came on this side in between the power transformer and the output transformer, over here on this side I'm going to put the, uh, the two RCA jacks uh, mounted on top of each other like this. So uh, nice little spot here for the input jacks. I'm going to try to keep all my power con kind of consolidated right here. I'll have my output jacks, output jacks, and, uh, and I'll have the IEC right here in the middle uh, where the power transformers at. I think it'll be nice and clean and I'll keep most of the power here in this little section away from my inputs, uh, which you'll want to do. Alright, as you can see, center line drawn. Uh, i got a center line here for the two RCAs we're going to mount. Got the two banana jacks here, got the IC here, we've got the fuse holder here, got two other banana jacks over here, and as you can see, there again, I made a mistake and redrew them. I thought they were a little too close, redrew the line, and just drew me some little arrows on there to tell me, hey, move outwards to these outer marks, not the inner ones. I don't, you know, I just draw little circles on here with a pen to kind of indicate relatively where these things are going to be. I don't actually try to draw the perfect circles on here. If you get the center point with two little marks like this, then when you get over to the drill press to start drilling these things, you really just pick out the item you're getting ready to drill for and find a bit the same size as that. And then you just hit the center spot here and the rest kind of takes, uh, takes itself into account. Keeps you from having to draw perfect size circles for everything you're going to need here. Hey, we got to do the front. As always, got our center line drawn. Okay, we got to draw a center line here and then I just measured out from it. I'm going to put the power switch here, going to put a little LED here. It leaves me a little room in the middle here to, uh, to put some sort of blue glow emblem or logo here. I'll have to figure that out, but you get the idea. Okay, I'm next. Anywhere I've got space in an amplifier, I like to mount these little terminal strips, and if you notice they're offset a little bit here from the uh, from where the hole's at to the actual terminal strip. So I like having the terminal strip in the middle. <clears throat> so I measured the delta between these two and I drew a little bit of an offset line here halfway between these 6S and 7s and the 807s. And now what I'm coming along and doing, as you can see right here, is I'm just kind of marking off and then uh, terminal strip. strip. So I kind of know what each of these are, and I'll measure this one as well and mark it off. But you get the idea. I want, I want some along in here, and I'm also going to want to put some along in here. Um, you're going to want to be able to tag stuff off to these things, whether it's um, you know, filter capacitors or whether it's um, maybe a cathode uh, bypass caps or whatever, you're going to want some common places to tie back to so that you're just not all point to point floating uh, um, without something to sturdy things up underneath. And this is a good example of why you take your time and do this stuff here on the bench uh, with Magic Marker on plastic instead of with a drill. Um, after I got these uh, tubes up here and realized where they were going to mount, 6SN7 and the uh, 6SL7, or 6SN7, I realized that that terminal strip was going to butt into the bottom of this tube. So I used some other different types of terminal strip that have a single lug in the middle, um, and those would fit just perfect right along in here. So I am going to use that point and that point. So I kind of marked out the rest of this on each side, and I put this in green. So I would know I would use that right there and then kind of drew it off and marked it as terminal strip. All right, and then I came along and added two more terminal strips, uh, one on each side right here. And, uh, you know, as long as the uh, center markings, of, you know, and uh, everything are fine where you're drilling the thing, all these little, you know, doodlings I've got going here are just to kind of tell me, hey, what am I, when I go to drill this thing, I'll bring a part over here and I'll say, okay, that's the size hole I need to drill, and I'll get the, the bolt out that I'm going to use for that and kind of kind of put it up against that. It's just to tell me what's going where. But I think at this point, I think we're done. 
I've got two terminal strips here. I've got one going across here. Um, I've got two going right here. That should give me a good good amount of tag places here. Got the output transformer, the power transformers all laid out. Got the tube sockets. Um, just to give me an idea here, I'll draw circles um, of where the tubes will go here. Got the front laid out, power LED. Got the whole back um, input. I mean output jacks, RCA banana. I mean banana. Got the two RCAs here. Got the IC connector here. Got the fuse connector here. And then over here on the other side, we have our holes that we have that are going to hold on the, uh, the two chokes from the inside. These things are going to mount up on the inside, so like that underneath. The last piece I've been studying, trying to figure out, I've got to mount two of these underneath. And I'm pretty sure, based on where I'm at right now, in between the tube sockets underneath on the bottom, I'll be able to pull uh, or mount both of these against these two terminal strips right here to hold them in place and they should fit right in between the tube sockets and then the good news about that is I'm keeping all the power kind of right up in here together and um, and you know away from uh, you know kind of this whole front end is going to be a sensitive area here and uh, the good news is um, all the power will be kind of be from here back. So I think that's going to work out quite well. I was wondering whether I was going to, have to mount these using some kind of brackets to the sides, but I'm pretty sure I can tag them off of these two terminal strips right here. If not, worst case, we could always, um, you know, find some other space once we get everything else laid out, how to mount these and drill some holes after the fact. Usually I like to drill all my holes before I paint, but um, you get the idea. I think I'm going to call this a wrap for today. I'm going to call this one, you know, how to mark up and lay out your, your chassis. I'm um, going to try to find some day, time today to get in here and actually start drilling this thing, but it might be next weekend until we finish. Um, also, i got Shelby Ham Fest coming up next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I will be there. Um, so stay tuned. I'm going to make a video of uh, Shelby this year. It should be a fun time. And lastly, uh, some people asking about the micro psyche. Am I going to show any uh, restoration processes on it? Yes, I am. I'm going to show you how to fix these feet on this thing because it's a common, notorious problem for them. I'm just trying to figure out the best way that I'm going to do that before I make a video. So I probably have some more parts yet to order. So stay tuned. That one could be a couple weeks or a month out. Thanks for watching, everybody. This series is still alive, and we'll, uh, we'll try to keep this thing rolling along.